In this scene, we're going to learn about collisions in Explosure Effects. We'll use the Explosure Effects Collider tag to turn geometry into colliders that redirect and interact with our fluid. We'll see how to fill objects with smoke and fire, how animated objects can transfer their velocity to the simulation. And finally, we'll simulate a high-pressure scenario using animated and static colliders. All right, so here we are in our collisions demo scene, and you can see we already have an XP system object here. Inside that, we have an Explosure Effects object, a sphere, which has an Explosure Effects source tag. And of course, because of that, if I hit play, we'll see a fluid solve. We'll see the Explosure Effects solve for the fuel and the heat. We're getting the burning and, of course, the resulting smoke. Okay, so of course, we're looking at colliders here, so we need some test geometry to work with. And I've got a, a folder here, a subfolder called Colliders. If we show that, it's full of a bunch of different objects, different geometries, and setups that we're going to help that are going to help us to demonstrate the collision system within Explosure Effects. We'll actually start with this simple cube. So I'm going to drag that out, and then I'm going to hide the rest because we don't need to see those for now. Uh, also, at the bottom of, of the hierarchy, we have this Collision Demos null. If I expand that, you'll see it's just a few different XP systems. And these are going to be useful. They're a bit more advanced versions of some of the principles I'm going to be showing here. So we'll show those as and when we need to. But for now, we need to turn this cube from just a piece of geometry in our scene to a specifically Explosure Effects Collider. So what we do, of course, is exactly the same as making a source object. We have to add a tag. So we right click the cube, X Particles Tags, and you'll see here we have an Explosure Effects Collider. Note this is different to the XP Collider. That's for particles. And then the Explosure Effects Collider is a specialist tag for this purpose. So we'll add that on there. And you'll see we have some familiar settings. If you've seen the uh, Explosure Effects Source tag before, you'll see that one has solid. It's got a velocity multiplier and pressure. And then in the Collider itself, of course, we have those as well. Now let's just... Let's move this cube around a bit, give it a bit of an angle so we can see it coming up like so. And let's hit play and see what happens. And you'll see our fluid is now being diverted around this collider. It's colliding with it and it's changing the direction and changing the velocities of our fluid and causing it to divert. And then if I rotate the camera around and if I actually look in wireframe, you can see that there's no fluid within this this cube object. I'm just going to turn the grid off. That was getting in the way there, like so. And so I could make this a different shape, much larger, much larger, like so. There we go. And obviously the buoyancy is forcing the fluid upward. The 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 heat in this simulation is is causing the buoyancy, and you can see it's forcing it to go around the cube and then divert. Okay. Now similarly to the Explosure Effects source tag, if we have the solid checkbox unchecked, we'll actually change the way that the surface is calculated. And now this is suitable and most suited for single poly thick items. So we would only uncheck this if we have single, uh, a planar object perhaps. Uh, we can actually demonstrate that with this halved torus. And I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna put our cube back in here for now, and I'm gonna copy our collider tag to the halved torus. And if I go to a shaded view, go back to frame zero, and I look under here, you'll see that on the back face, I actually have a different material, but this is just a single poly thick. I've actually taken a torus and just halved it. Uh, what this means is, is that there's no true volume here. We can actually calculate a volume. So if I hit play, remember in our collision tag, we have it set to solid. If I hit play, you'll actually see it is diverting the fluid. And in fact, it's actually treating it like as though this had a face. It's treating it like it was sealed because it's finding other geometry on the other side here. It can calculate an interior volume. So I'm going to hide that. Uh, and oh, I'm not going to hide that. I'm going to put that in wireframe, in fact, like so. And you can see it's diverting away from it as if there was a face on the inside here. We don't want that. We actually want it to fill the interior of our halved torus. So we just need to uncheck the solid checkbox there, hit play, and now we should see it actually filling inside the torus. And there we go. Now the accuracy of this, sort of how closely it hugs the, the wall of the torus is based on the resolution of the simulation. 
So if we decrease the voxel size, let's just take a look at this from the underside here. There we go, we can see it filling up our torus, even though it's only just one polygon thick. Uh, like I said, we can go to the Exposure Effects object, change the voxel size down, and we'll get a, a more accurate representation of our torus, as the, obviously, having smaller voxels means that we get a more, a fine, a finer representation of our torus faces. Okay, so there we go, it's flowing around and filling that one polygon thick shell. And I can move the camera around and you'll see that's colliding nicely. Okay, so there is a, a single poly thick and also the solid modes. I'm gonna bring our cube back out. I'm gonna throw our tag back on there. And we're just gonna take a look at the other parameters. So we have this pressure one here. I'm gonna reset it to solid by the way. Uh, we have this pressure one here and now this is only positive because of course if we had a negative one it would attract it towards the collider but then there's nowhere for it to go after that point so it would be uh, nullifying the actual collision the, the velocities that are caused by the collision so we have positive pressure and if i make that quite high you'll see that when this the adaptive bounds actually reach the cube the, the pressure will actually have an effect and you can see it's pushing our fluid away. It's fighting against the buoyancy here. So that's actually similar, that works in a similar fashion to the exposure effects source tag as well. Okay, now what we can do here is we can also show that it you can have holes in your geometry, different shapes of the geometry. And I'm just gonna grab this, uh, not the half torus, the cube cutout. And I'm gonna actually cut a hole inside our cube here. So first of all, I'm just gonna actually make it a child. I'm gonna zero out all the PSR data, and then I'm gonna actually bring it back out. And then I'm gonna add a bool Boolean object. And I'm gonna add the main cube and then the second cube. Then I'm gonna add the collider tag to the Boolean object itself. And let's see what happens here. So I hit play, and you'll see that our fluid is moving all the way through. And the reason for this is that our Boolean object here is actually not a solid object. It's actually not sealing this. It's two separate objects. And if I make this editable, you'll see we have two separate items altogether. So the collider tag, the exposure effects collider tag has no idea what to do with this. So what we'll do is we'll go to the object, uh, the Boolean object, and I'm gonna hit create single object. And now, we should see a difference. We should see an actual collision going on and it should be able to flow through and up through that center area there. Oh, the pressure is still on actually. I should turn that off. It was actually pushing the fluid away so it wasn't able to get through the middle here. So hit play and let the fluid float up through the center there. So as you can see, it's a very robust collision. Anywhere that there is a voxel within our piece of geometry, within that volume, uh, will be diverted and actually act as a collision between our fluid and our geometry. Now, of course, we can arrange and model our geometry so that it can cause different effects such as containing the fluid. We can actually capture it. And just to demonstrate that, we have an object over here called container. And it's actually open at one side, similar to our halved torus but the principle is gonna show us some nice interesting effects. I've transferred our collider tag to that. And let's bring that down in Y. And let's have a look at the underside. Now we can see that it's a box and the box actually has a thickness to its walls. I've just added the material on the inside faces here just to make it nice and clear that that's the inside. But it is, a, it's not just one polygon thick. It is actually a solid. So if I hit play, you'll see the fluid actually goes up inside the box and it starts to fill the box. So this is where it's really interesting. We can actually fill volumes and, and objects, geometries, with our fluid using colliders. So you can see it's, it's actually filling up and then it's sort of overflowing a little bit. If, if I shrink this object down, it'll fill up even faster. So let's do that like so. And you'll see it'll get overwhelmed very quickly and then all of the other fluid has to divert around it and carry on up with the buoyancy force. So that's a really nice realistic effect and it's really useful for, for filling shapes. You can imagine filling logos and type objects and things like that. And that in fact is what we have in one of our demo systems down below.
Now I'm disabling this collider tag as well, and as well as the source tag, just to make sure they don't interfere with our other systems. So I'm gonna collapse that, I'm gonna hide it, and I'm gonna reveal our type fill system down here. So let's, um, let's turn it all on. Let's unhide it from the viewport, and you'll see I actually have some cached data in here already. That's a bit of a spoiler. Let's go back to frame zero, and let's display our colliders. So I've expanded out the, the XP system, and you can see it's quite a complex system. It's got a bunch of different objects in there. But if we break it down, we can see that we have a bunch of objects with source tags, exposure effects source tags, and then we have some with collider tags as well. So we wanna see the colliders, so I've just shown this one here. And as you can see, it's an extrude object made up of a spline mask, which is a rectangle with a piece of type punched out of it. So this will behave as a collider. And in fact, if I turn our cache off completely, make sure it's off in the tag as well. And I'm gonna turn our other collider off, which is these face colliders. I'm gonna hit play and you'll see our sources are placed at the bottom of the letters and then that's colliding with our exposure effects type object. Now you can see it's simulating. Now you can see an immediate problem is that it is escaping our, our letters. So what I did for this is I kept it nice and simple. I just closed these faces off using other pieces of geometry. So I've got these two things here called face colliders. They're inside an XP join object, which just merges them together and it's seen as one. And there you go, I turn those on. If I go to wireframe, I'm gonna hit N then G, and you can see they're butting up right against our extrude object. And this should now create a seal. So essentially we're sealing in the fluid. So if I press play now, you'll see that we have it moving up in the simulation, but it's not escaping the front faces. So let's pause at that moment and go to the sides here. And you can see it's remaining within our our, our contained sealed volume. Okay, so there is something else going on here that's quite interesting to know, and that's actually with one of the source tags. And filling a volume using the collider, so we've got the collider, the collider is keeping the fluid within the, the uh, that EFX type. However, what's encouraging it to move around is all the different pressures and the buoyancy and things like that. Now I've got this thing on here called vacuum. If I turn that off, go to frame zero and press play, and let it evolve the simulation somewhat. We'll notice that, of course, the buoyancy is gonna carry our fluid up, but the collider is keeping it within the volume. However, it's not encouraging it to fill certain parts of the volume. So what we need to do is we actually need to encourage the fluid into certain areas, and we can do that using a source tag and having a negative pressure. So essentially it becomes a vacuum. It's creating a almost like an attraction into certain areas. So if we show those objects that I've got as vacuums, and you can see I've got one in the uh, part of the F there and in the E. And if I look at the XP join and then the tag that's on them, you can see it's just a standard exposure effects source tag with a negative 200 pressure. And I'll play again. And we'll be able to see that actually the the center of that, the, the this bar on the E here and on the F will actually get more fluid dragged into them. And there we go, like so. So whilst that's not explicitly colliders, it's a combination of using sources and colliders to fill a volume. And that's really handy for, for these really cool logo animations. Now, another thing to note here is that if you look at the X, you'll see that we have stepping. And this is a common problem with any volumetric simulation. Um, it's, a, it's essentially, because these letters are perfectly grid aligned with our exposure effects container, they can actually utilize the edges of the voxels and therefore there's no stepping. This is basically like a pixelated image. And to improve this, we'll actually, we would need to increase the resolution. So we'd need to decrease the voxel size. So that's just worth noting on these sort of angled surfaces and curved surfaces. Okay, so let's actually look at the cached result of this and, and we can actually see it playing back in a, a bit more real time. There we go, and let's hide our collision objects like so. And in fact, we can actually hide these sources as well. Hit play and we can see much more in a, in a real time playback, the volume being filled. You're getting that smoke 
and fire filling up our EFX type. And then actually afterwards, our, our smoke is still buoyant because there's still heat in the simulation and it's in, it's moving up in the simulation. So we're not at full saturation up here. Essentially, it allows us to, to move the smoke up to the top of the simulation because there's, there's enough room for it to go up there. Okay. So that's a demo of containing the fluids. Let's move on to the next topic of the colliders. And I'm just going to turn this whole system object off like so and hide it. So let's go back to our original system, our collision system and reveal that. And let's reactivate everything, expand it and make sure that we enable that tag again because we actually turned it off if you recall. And in our container, we're actually done with, so I can get rid of that, put it inside the colliders folder. And the next thing we're going to look at is velocity and collider velocity. So let's drag this keyframed cylinder out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell explosion effects that this is a collider object. So we need to right click X particles tags and add our XP exposure effects collider tag. Now in the tag itself, you'll see we have this velocity multiplier. I'm going to set this to zero to begin with and see what happens. So let's hit play and we'll let the cylinder animate through the fluid. And you'll see it moves through the fluid, but it actually just cuts it away. So essentially, because the fluid can't exist within this, this solid object, it just simply makes sure that all of the voxels within it are zero properties. So there's zero smoke, zero fuel, and then the velocity surrounding it is ignored completely. Now that looks quite artificial, and if, if you scrub through, you can see that it's just chopping our smoke and not applying any velocity. If I actually make, I'm, I'm going to make this a little larger, like so, and then I'm going to increase our velocity multiplier. So let's put it back to its default of 100, and let it move through that again. And you'll see now we're getting a, a sort of a bow wave from our cylinder object, our keyframe cylinder object, and the velocities are being imparted into the simulation. They're being passed, advected into those voxels, and it's being added to our calculation of velocity and the, re the resulting fluid simulation. So that looks far more realistic than having no velocity multiplication, but perhaps we want to find a sort of an in-between. So maybe we go to 30%, we play again, and this simply just reduces the strength of that velocity uh, being imparted. Now you can see it does affect it, but it's somewhere in between that eating away and actually adding velocities. So perhaps you have a hero object that is porous, maybe it has lots of holes in it, but it's still pushing the air, but it's also letting a lot of the air go through it. Um, it would actually have a, 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 a lesser effect in, than a solid object that's pushing all of the air out the way. So you can use this velocity multiplier to dial stuff like that in. Okay, and of course, we can go lower, we could also go higher. Now this will create a uh, quite extreme scenario because we're doubling the amount of velocities that are applied. You'll see the simulation slows down for a second there. And it's a much slower sim because we are adding so much more velocity that it's causing uh, the explosion effect solver to have to calculate a lot more um, of that. Now it looks like we're sort of bending space time there and we're actually getting a really nice looking effect. Uh, slightly unrealistic of course, but um, you know, if it's a superhero film or something like that, you might want one of these kind of effects. Okay, so I'm multiplying the velocity from keyframe animation here. So we have a the cylinder starts at one point, its position is keyframed, and then its end position is keyframed, and then interpolated in between. And we can impart that no problem. Now, if we use a an expression driven um, object as our collider, so I'm going to drop our collider tag onto there and let's just return our keyframe cylinder to the colliders folder. And you'll see our torus is being sort of moved around by this expression tag, this vibrate tag. And when it comes into contact with the fluid, let me deselect that cylinder, you'll see that it's actually just cutting away. It is diverting some of the fluid where it meets it, but it's not actually imparting any of its velocity. And the reason for that is very similar to with an exposure effects source tag. It is an expression tag itself, so it needs to execute at a specific time in the Cinema 4D priorities. Now, all we need to do is we need to change one of the tag's priorities, and we can go to the vibrate tag and make sure it executes first. I'm going to make it negative 20. I'm going to hit play again, and let's see what happens. 
And now you'll see that it really has an impact on the velocity of our fluid as well as colliding with it. It's actually transferring that uh, that velocity as if it's kind of creating a bow wave. And now it's calculating properly. So if you if you are using express expression driven animated objects, you'll need to change their priority to make sure that it executes before the explosion effects collider tag. It's exactly the same as with a source tag. And there you go, we get this interesting evolving simulation. Now, of course, with moving objects, I'm just gonna delete that, put it into our colliders folder. And we're gonna go back to a, another demonstration. We're gonna go to one of the other complex demonstrations of moving colliders. So let's uh, do the same. Let's collapse our collision system, turn everything off and hide it. And let's go to our collision demos null. And the one we're interested in here is the fog layer. So let's turn it on and reveal everything. And you'll see we have this interesting looking object over here. It's a propeller. And I'm gonna actually turn off our, I'm gonna leave our um, exposure effects turned off for now. And we're just gonna concentrate on what this piece of geometry is and, and how we've prepared it. So if I go inside here, this is just like in, in a production scene, you would have a piece of geometry that you want to collide with an exposure effect simulation, whether that be um, fog, smoke, fire, any of these kind of volumetric effects. So what I've got is I've got uh, a rotor here and inside this rotation null, which is automatically rotation rotating, if I move the timeline, you'll see it's actually rotating these propellers. And we have a couple of objects in here. We have a nose cone, which actually has a collider tag on it. We also have this, uh, the cloner with the blades. And then I also have another XP join that, that combines them all together into one collider with the collider tag on it. And you'll see that has some extra pressure added to it as well. So these are gonna cause uh, the fluid to move away from them. And when that XP join is merged, it messes up my materials, but it actually creates a collider so that it deals with this entire propeller, all of the blades at once. And then we go down to this other one and then all of the other colliders, all of the colliders that are static relative to the animation, of course, they're not rotating within the within the main null. You can see that, that when that's on, it's just got one tag and the XP join is nice and convenient way of combining them all. So what happens is, is when we have a collider like this, if I go to wireframe, you can see that we have a lot of polygons. And what happens is, is that within our exposure effects object, this all of these surfaces are calculated. They are turned into something called an SDF, signed distance field, and that's utilized to know wh what is inside and what is outside the object so that we know um, where we want the collision to occur, where the surface is and that kind of data. So with that knowledge, this is obviously much higher res than we've dealt with before. Um, it will take longer to calculate, but it's still pretty cool. And I'll turn our uh, exposure effects fog volume on. Now we, we have it cached. So let's view it cached to start with. And let's hit play. And you can see as our propeller interacts with the fluid, we get this really nice looking collision. And the, and the exposure effects object itself has no buoyancy. So I've turned the buoyancy off. So it's just static waiting for something to interact with it. And then the actual tag, there's no extra velocities being added. It's just purely smoke on the first frame. Okay, so we can see that prop moving through. Let's have a little bit of a closer look to it. And what we can do is we can actually turn that cache off, go back to frame zero, and we can just We'll increase the voxel size just so that we get some viewport playback here, like so. And we'll watch the the first few frames of the collision. And you can see, just as we have been dealing with all of these other colliders, wherever the solid object is, it will actually move the fluid and, and cause a collision. There we go, it's really nice. And it submerges and then it comes up the other side. So we can look at this from all different angles and you can see that the collision is being maintained. Now, the resolution of our simulation is important here because the blades, of course, are gonna be of a certain dimension, a certain thickness. And if you want a really accurate collision, a really accurate even um, emission, you're gonna to need to make sure the voxel size is small enough to respect that size. So I had it at 1.5 when I cached it. So let's go back to that and let's turn the cache back on, like so. Make sure the cache object's on as well. 
And let's just scrub a little bit. Let's scrub so we can see a, a few moments. And you can see the interaction with the blades now is much more accurate. It's also helping, having a, a, a finer resolution is helping the pressure solve as well. So there's more data to work with. And as I move through, you'll see this lovely interaction. Scrub through a few frames and you'll see we're getting the vorticing. Now there's a moment a bit later on that has an absolutely excellent moment where the blade cuts through. There we go. And you can see the blade is cutting through the fluid. Let's go back. Hit play. And you'll see the blade cuts through the fluid and displaces it, imparts some velocity. And then we get all of this turbulence behind our, our object. Okay, so that's a more advanced version of our, our velocity sim. Uh, but the principles are obviously all the same. We just have to add an exposure effects um, collider tag. And in that collider tag, we have to have the velocity multiplication above 0% so that it can impart its velocity to those voxels and then to the fluid in turn. Okay, so let's deactivate our fog layer scene and hide everything. Go back up to our collisions. And one of the last things we're going to look at is actually pressure and, and containing um, fluid inside a pressured sort of simulation. We've actually looked at that somewhat with the with the text object, but this one is actually simulating pressure and it's a really interesting sim. So back to our collision system. Let's reactivate everything and display it, of course. Go to our colliders and you'll see we have this thing called pipe and plunger. Now this is the most complicated object we have in this hierarchy. And you'll see that we have a very bizarre looking setup perhaps. So I'm just going to turn off everything and I'm going to hit play to see what we have here. And we have this uh, sweep object. If I open up our hierarchy, you can see we have a sweep object that is hollow. It has a pipe profile that has a, a hole in it. And in fact, if we turn our display tag off, we'll be able to see this. And you can see that we have an interior, an exterior, and it's sort of it has a scaling to sort of flare out this end. So this is to demonstrate that we can uh, simulate pressure here. And let's hide that again by turning on our display tag, like so. And then we actually have this plunger that's using the spline from this pipe path. And it's just animating up and down our, our pipe here. So it starts off a little bit further up. And then it pulls up all the way through there. Now, if you've ever dealt with some, uh, with something with a plunger inside it, you'll, uh, like a syringe perhaps, you'll pull the syringe and it will pull the fluid with it. Now, because we're simulating pressure here, we actually get an effect very similar to that. So let's go back to frame zero. And of course, we're gonna need to add collider tags to our two, piece, two objects here, our, our plunger and our pipe. So I'm gonna select them both at the same time, right click, X particles tags, exposure effects collider. That's a well rehearsed drill now. And of course, as I mentioned earlier with the, the tags, they have an expression order that they have a priority. And if we go to our align to spline, I'm gonna ensure that this executes before our plunger does so that all of the velocity is taken into account. The other one doesn't matter. The, the pipe here doesn't matter because it's just a static object. All right, so let's turn our source back on. Let's make it a touch smaller. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it only emit over a certain number of frames, just to kind of fill this area here and then actually turn off. Let's hit play and see what happens. So it's gonna fill this first, the, the bell part of this pipe, the flared end, and it's gonna kind of butt up against the plunger. So you can see that collision is really good. It's really robust. It's not going anywhere past our plunger. But then when our plunger all of a sudden starts to move, it starts to draw our fluid in with it. And it's following. It actually sucks the fluid up with it. And we get this amazing moment where it kind of pulls it all the way up to the top of the pipe. And I think I'll stop adding fluid at this point. So I can just add a keyframe onto our enable there move to the next frame, turn it off and keyframe that. So that's just a, a simple way of just turning off that source completely. It won't be utilized at all. We could of course also turn off this sphere primitive, but I'm just gonna do it the nice simple way there with the source tag. And there we go. So this is actually drawn up to the top of the pipe, all the way up to the top, and then it's gonna get pushed back down. Now, 
obviously we're dealing with quite fast moving objects here so we will see a collapse of the fluid somewhat but it will push most a lot of it back out again if you wanted a, a really accurate version of this simulation we'd, we'd want to increase the sub steps and the pressure iterations and the accuracy of the overall solver but for now this is just a, an example so our plunge has reached the top it's it's dragged up our fluid with it and now it's going to go back down if we look at the keyframe on the uh, this tag it's just going to start here and just about 140 and here we go it's pushing it all the way back down through and you'll start to see that it's going to build up some more pressure it's sort of a bow wave and it's going to change the direction of our fluid so it's going to now fight against the buoyancy and you'll see it's pushing it all the way back out down to the bottom here compressing it obviously that's not possible but it's going to try and give it some pressure which then pushes it out the other end, other end of our pipe here and there we go so this is actually a really cool and interesting thing to be able to simulate because it is uh it can create all sorts of cool effects and one of those particular effects that's quite common is the interior of a combustion engine so the piston of a, of a combustion engine and i actually have a demo that's sort of a similar concept to that in one of our more advanced scenes and we're actually done with this hierarchy now so let's actually deactivate it completely and hide it and then back down to our collision demo scenes the more advanced ones when we have this one called vacuum it's the last one we're going to be looking at so let's re-enable everything and display it and you'll see we have a few different items here so let's view it from the side now if i expand it out let's just show everything and you can see we have an exposure effects object it's actually cached at the moment and we have um, this sphere source so we have a sphere that's just going to add some fluid to our simulation and then we have a bunch of different collider objects now if i go up to our exposure effects and actually disable it for now let's see what's actually going on what is the animation we can see the yellow object here this piston is actually compressing and moving into this um, tube and we're going to get a decrease in volume within this area here now these purple parts if we change the display of this bool, bool object here you'll actually see that those are actually holes within that piston body the the sort of the the body the the vessel if you like the tube and that will actually allow volume uh, fluid to escape so let's hide that again put it in its more clean display and then we have this uh, this stop at the end this plug essentially to stop it from going out the end of the tube so let's uh, enable our exposure effects object and let's view this cache and you'll see that as the piston moves out of our container or out of our tube it draws that fluid just like it did with the pipe and the plunger and as it's pushing it in it's pushing it out of these areas here and you can see that we get this really cool and interesting looking simulation and all this is remember is just a combination of x particles exposure effect sources adding to the simulation and then we've got the pistons the objects here with the collider tags on them the exposure effects collider tag which is forcing the fluid away from the collider objects it's imparting their velocity to them and enabling this beautiful simulation okay so let's look at that one more time you'll see it draws it out and not only does it draw it out it actually it clears the end of the the tube here and some escapes and then it pushes back in and you'll see here at this moment let's just do frame by frame there it actually even draws the fluid that it's pushed out of the tube back in again until it goes out it's just drawing all of that fluid back out and then back in until it pushes it with pressure out of this area here okay so that concludes our in-depth look at the exposure effects collider tag of course we can add it to all sorts of different geometry to get different effects we can move those pieces of geometry and impart their velocities to our simulation as well to get really realistic looking collisions.